Just like so many other teachers before, I've made a mistake in one of my previous videos, and this video was in relation to the collisions of our galaxy with Andromeda galaxy, and today I wanted to explain what the mistake was and what the actual answer is. Now, let's just watch the galaxies collide again, and I'm gonna try to explain this to you using a little bit of math, so if you don't like math, you may want to turn off the video, but it's gonna be kind of fun. Anyway, so... What I was talking about is the probability of our um, our star, Sun, colliding with another star. Now, I, I mentioned that it was something like one in a million, and this is where my mistake was, because what I was talking about, of course, is the probability of collision of a Sun if the Sun was in a one dimension, if it was a one dimensional type of a situation where basically there's a sun in the middle and then another sun might or might not appear in the same sort of location as our sun. Now, if that makes no sense, let me just try to explain it to you a little bit better than that. Now, this is one dimension. What if it's two dimensions? Uh, so if we are looking at something like a plane, here's a really bad, badly drawn example of a plane where the sun now becomes two dimensional objects. So we have two dimensions in this case, we're going to have a much higher chance of a collision, but that's st still not going to give us an exact... Uh, oh, this kind of looks like a Japanese flag. Uh, it's still not going to give us an exact uh, number. It's not, not going to give us an exact probability of having a collision. So if that still makes no sense, let me actually explain to you in even better words. So here's what we're going to be talking about. So imagine, imagine our sun is inside a three-dimensional cube. So here is the cube, and right in the middle, we're going to have a little sphere, which is going to represent our sun. Now, this sphere right here is our sun. It has a little Earth orbiting around it, somewhere right here, and then there's a little Mars, somewhere right here. Now we have water on Mars, so we might put some, a little bit of blue in it. Just to tidy a little bit of blue. All right, so here we go. This is our solar system, and this cube represents the space around our sun. Now, the closest star to our sun is Alpha Centauri. Actually, it's a, a binary slash triple star, a technical binary star that has another uh, star orbiting around them. So it's somewhere over here. And then this is Alpha Centauri Alpha, Alpha Centauri Beta, and then we have Alpha Centauri Gamma. Uh, now, th the distance between um, our Sun and uh, Alpha Centauri is something around 4.5 light years away, which is really, 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 really far away. Now, assuming that this is the distance that we have to deal with when another galaxy tries to visit and collide into us, what we're looking at um, in terms of probability is what is the probability that another star, let's just say another really, really bright star or many, many stars, as they're passing toward us, as they're moving toward us, will occupy the same space as our sun. Now, obviously for this particular example where the box is not very big, at some point, boom, one of them will hit our sun and this will be the end of our sun. Or I guess maybe they'll just combine or possibly cause a supernova. Now, that's a small box though, right? This is an example where the box is kind of small. Here's a, something that looks a little bit, little bit more realistic. Now imagine this sphere right here represents the emptiness of space around our sun. And our sun is going to be right in the middle. It's going to be a tiny, 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 tiny dot. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. It's right, right here in this vicinity. Now. It's a super tiny dot. And this represents the emptiness of space. And of course, this emptiness has a radius between our sun and this line here. This is approximately 4.5 light years. So... Now, what is the chance that, assuming that this is a 3D sphere and our sun is a tiny sphere as well, what is the chance that another star of relatively same size, because um, the size uh, of stars on average is very close to our sun or even smaller than our sun, so what is the chance that another star is going to occupy same space, same three-dimensional space, when Andromeda comes in and collides with us, and basically all of those other stars come in in the same sort of regions of space as our sun. So basically, what is the chance that one of them will occupy the space? And the way to calculate it is as follows. What we do is we take the volume of our sun. So this is volume of sun. 
we then divide it by volume of the sphere that I just drew, the volume of sphere, and then multiply this by 100 percent to get percentage. Now we don't have to uh, do this in percentages, but this would basically give you an idea of how to do this as a percentage. And this is of course for one star to collide with our sun. Now this of course is very simplified because we don't expect only one star to visit our sun. We expect it to be s so many different stars. Um, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to just take an assumption and, and we're going to pretend that every single star gets to visit our sun. Imagine it's kind of like Imagine that like this is Andromeda right here and maybe for some unknown reason um, our sun gets sucked in in such a way that it passes by every single star in Andromeda and then it gets to go inside the center. So basically what is the chance that you know at some point our sun collides with some, one of those stars? Now to make these calculations a little bit more feasible and a little bit easier on the eyes, let's convert some of these numbers into kilometers. So. Uh, we know that 4.5 light years is approximately, and this is very approximate, approximately 40 trillion, 40 trillion kilometers, which is basically 40 and then this, 12 zeros. So this is the distance uh, or radius between our sun and the closest star, and this is what we kind of expect if, if we actually come into Andromeda as well. Now the radius of our sun is much, much smaller. The radius of our sun is approximately 700,000 kilometers, but just for the sake of calculations, I'm going to make this a million kilometers. So it's going to be a million just to make this easier to calculate. Now, just to make this super, super simple in terms of calculations, we're going to actually get rid of these zeros right here because uh, this will make it calculations a little bit lighter and easier. So there we go. We're going to get rid of these six zeros. So we're going to assume our sun is just one unit and the actual sphere right here is approximately 40 million units. So whatever that unit is doesn't really matter. So imagine it's like a marble and this is like a big, big, big bowl. Now we'll need a little bit of geometry for this and we'll need to remember that the volume um, of a sphere is calculated as this, four thirds pi r cube. So we need to know the volume of the cube, uh, sorry, the volume of a sphere for us to find the probability of, you know, being inside that sphere. So this is the volume of a sphere. So what we're going to do now is we're going to plug this in here and we have the radius, we have pi and we don't really need anything else to try to figure out what the probability is. And the volume of our sun is actually just this, it's four thirds pi. So because r is one, uh, our cube is also one, so the volume of the sun is just four thirds pi, whereas the volume of the sphere is a little bit more complicated than that. The volume of the sphere is four thirds pi multiplied by 40 million cubed. Cubed. So that is the volume of the sphere. We don't really have the exact number for this yet, but before we get the exact number, uh, we need to think about do we need it? We don't really need it because we can now do the following. I'm, I'm just going to erase part of this so I can show you what I mean. So on top, we're going to write the uh, volume of the sun, which is 4 thirds pi. And on the bottom, we're going to write 4 thirds pi multiplied by 40 million cubed. And if you remember how to simplify in math, we can now just cross out these two and these two to get our uh, probability of hitting the sun with just one star as 1 divided by 40 million cubed. Now this we need to kind of calculate so because it's going to be a really really tiny number so let's use a calculator. And so we're going to divide 1 by 40 million cubed and it's going to give us an answer of 1.56 uh, times 10 to the negative 23rd power. So basically it's 0 followed by 23 zeros and then 156. It's a very 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 small number. A very very small chance that one star is going to hit our our star. Now, okay, that's that's one star. What if it's a trillion stars? A actually, that's exactly uh, the approximation we have for Andromeda Galaxy right now. We think it has approximately one trillion stars in it. In other words, what if there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and so on until we get to a trillion? Will one of them eventually hit the sun? Okay, so let's use a bit of probability again. So, how do you calculate that? Well, let me show you. Now, this right here is the chance that our sun is hit by another star. And what we need to do in probability now is we basically take one 
and subtract this number from one and what we'll get is the so it's basically something like this it's going to be zero point nine 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 twenty three nines eight four three seven five. Now this right here is the chance that our sun is not hit by anything. So it's basically almost over ninety nine percent. It's almost hundred percent, but it's not exactly hundred percent. And that's uh you know one star. Now we're talking about a trillion stars. So what do we do in that case? So in probability, what you need to do now is you put you put a power which represents the number of trials. So if this was like two stars coming toward our sun, we'd put number two here. If it's 10 stars, we'd put 10 here. If it's 100 stars, we'd put 100 here. And if it's a trillion stars, we'd put a trillion. And trillion, of course, has 12 zeros. Now, this is essentially the number we have to try to calculate. Uh, 23 nines followed by 84375 to do the trillionth power. It's a pretty big number, not all calculators can do it. Even my calculator might have trouble with that, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Uh, and let's see what we get. So what we want to find is, uh, oh, basically what this will give you is the probability of uh, all of those stars passing by and at least one of them hitting our star and basically destroying the star. Um, and if we get something below, let's just say we get something something like this as an answer. Now, this means that there is still 99.9% .9 chance that we were safe. Nothing will happen to our sun. However, if we get something below 50, like for example, if something like this happens, if this is the answer to this number, if it's 0.473, in that case, it's very likely, it's more than 50% chance that our sun will be hit by at least one star as it passes through all of the stars in Andromeda galaxy. So let's calculate and find out what the actual number is. And this is the number I got. Look at that. My calculator was able to calculate this. 0.99. This means there's a 99% chance that nothing will happen and our sun is absolutely safe. 99% chance that it will not collide with anything. Just under 1% or 0.9% chance that it will collide with something. And so the actual answer was 0.990-ish approximately. So this means that there's, if you multiply this by 100% now, this means that there's a 99% chance we or our sun will be safe in 3.5 billion years when it uh, passes through Andromeda Galaxy, even if it has to pass every single star. Alright, so what if it has to pass through 10 trillion stars? What if Andromeda Galaxy is a lot bigger than we actually estimated? If it's 10 trillion stars, it, it decreases to 90%. It's actually only 91%, uh, meaning that there's about 9% 9% chance that uh, our star, our sun, will collide with something. And if there is 100 trillion stars in Andromeda Galaxy, if it's more giant than we even imagined, in that case, uh, there is... Uh, calculate this, try to calculate what the chance is. Well, of course, this is about 63% chance that um, our sun will collide with something, which means we are probably in trouble then. If Andromeda Galaxy is actually a lot more larger, if it's about 100 times as big as we think it is, then we're in trouble. Otherwise, we're pretty safe and very likely nothing will happen to our sun. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was clear and hopefully now you know that we're pretty safe when Andromeda comes to visit. Thank you so much for watching. And please subscribe if you like a Universe Sandbox 2 or any other space videos or math videos because there's going to be a lot of those coming. And check out some of the other Universe Sandbox 2 videos I posted in the link in the description below. Thank you guys so much and game you later. Bye-bye.